हेलो एवरीवन सो वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन चैनल दैट इज वी आर इन टेक्नो वर्ल्ड सो इन केस ऑफ टुडेज वीडियो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू टेल यू द सेकंड एग्जांपल इन केस ऑफ शॉर्टेस्ट जॉब फर्स्ट एंड वर्ल्ड राइट सो इन केस ऑफ दिस व्हाट यू डू जस्ट राइट डाउन द अनदर प्रॉब्लम using shortest job first algorithm right so here we are having five processes right now right five processes we are having and for that purpose the arrival time and the burst time is given now what do you have to find out if the arrival time and the burst time is given then the first thing which you have to solve or which you have to draw is the gain chart right and you have to find out the turn around time and the waiting time and one more thing you would learn over here that how to calculate the response time right in this video i would tell you that how to calculate the response time right so there is one formula for calculating the response time okay and like uh, so these are the things which you have to calculate okay so if you have drawn the gain chart then obviously the completion time you could find out the average turn around time you could find out and the average waiting time easily you could find out right so what you do first of all draw the gain chart right so in case of gain chart in case of gain chart first of all you would check that the process always start from zero right cpu would be allotted from zero point of time right so at zero at zero which is the process who is arriving first right first of all you just check the arrival time you just check in case of this arrival time process number p4 is arriving first process number p4 is arriving first so that is why i am just writing process p4 is arriving at zero at quantum of time right now for how much time it is being executed it is being executed for 6 quantum of time for 6 quantum of time okay now what what is the next step as the previous video i have tell you right what you have to do between 0 to 6 you have to check that is there any other process who has been arrived in the ready queue is there any other process who has been arrived in the ready queue yes between 0 to 6 process number 1 process number p2 has been arrived because it is having the arrival time that is 1 right so sequentially we would write the number of processes right process number p2 has been arrived with the burst time that is 5 okay then is there any other process who has been arrived in the ready queue yes process number p1 has also been arrived process number p1 has been arrived with one point uh, with one quantum of time right after that process number p5 has also been arrived with the execution time that is 3 okay then between 0 to 6 is there any other process yes process number p3 process number p3 has been arrived between this 0 to 6 okay hope you have understood now uh, so what is the burst time burst time is 1 okay that means between 0 to 6 right till then the process number p4 is being executed right then in the background then in the background four processes has been arrived in the ready queue right process number p2 p1 p5 and p3 four processes are waiting in a ready queue right now what we have to do we have to apply the shortest job first algorithm right so shortest job first algorithm says the process who is having the minimum or you could say like who is having the shortest burst time would be executed first so you just check who is having the shortest burst time process number p1 and process number p3 is having the shortest burst time 
Now again there is a problem that two processes are having the same burst time. Right? Now what do you have to do? Right? So in this case you have to apply the FCFS. The process who has been arrived first that would be executed first. If two processes are having the same burst time. Right? So process number P1. Process number P1 would be executed first. So it is having the burst time that is 1. So it would be 7. Now the turn of process number P3. P3 is having the burst time that is again 1. So it would be 7 plus 1. That means 8. Now it has been executed. Completely it has been executed. Process number P4 uh, has been executed. Process number P1 has been executed. Now the turn is of process P3. So it has also been executed. Process number P3. Now only P2 and P5 is left. Okay. P2 and P5 is left. Okay. So we just do check. That between these two processes. P5 is having the less. Or you could say the shortest burst time. So P5 would be executed first. So 8 plus 3. 11. Right. Now the turn is of only uh, like P2 is left. Only P2 is left, right? So it would come into the running queue. That means the CPU would be allotted to process number P2. So the execution time of process number P2 is 5. So it would be 11 plus 5. That means 16, right? I think you have to understand that we have to draw a gain chart ko draw karna, right? Because like we have to see what is the shortest burst time है. अगर आपके पास ready queue में बहुत सारे processes wait कर रहे हैं, right? Ready queue में एक से ज़्यादा processes अगर wait कर रहे हैं, so that means आपको यहाँ पर check करना होगा the shortest burst time, okay? And if there is only one single process in the ready queue, then obviously that would be executed first, okay? So this is how you would draw the Ken chart. Now what you do? You just write down the completion time. Okay, so the completion time for process number P1. Just do check. Process number P1 kab yaha par end ho raha hai. In case of CPU, like CPU is being allotted into this. This is the running queue and this is the ready queue. Right? So process number P1 aapka end ho raha hai. 7 quantum of time pe. So 7 quantum of time is the completion time. Then process number P2 ke liye aapka completion time ho ga 16. Process number P3 ke liye aapka jo completion time yaha par rahega, that would be 8. Process number P4 ke liye it would be 6. Process number P5 ke liye it would be 11. Okay, so is tarikye se hum, hum yaha par check kar sakte hai ki kis tarikye se completion time ko likha ja sakta hai or like frame kiya ja sakta hai. Okay, now the thing is how to calculate the turnaround time. As you know very well that the formula is completion time minus arrival time. Okay. So the completion time we know very well. Right. And the arrival time is already given in the question. Right. So you just do subtract this arrival time from the completion time. 7 minus 2. It would be 5. 16 minus 1. It would be 15. 8 minus 4. It would be 4. 6 minus 0. It would be 6. 11 minus 2. It would be 9. So this is how you can calculate the turn around time. Okay. Ab aapko waiting time ka calculate karna hai. So waiting time ke liye humare paas ek formula hai that is already defined. That is turn around time minus burst time. Right. So the turn around time you have already found out. So 5 minus the burst time. 5 minus 1. It would be 4. Then 15 minus 5. It would be 10. 4 minus 1, 3. 6 minus 6, it would be 0. And 9 minus 3, it would be 6. Okay. So this is how, like, how to calculate the turnaround time and the waiting time. And how to draw the Gantt chart, I have already told you. Right. Now the part which is left is, like, how to calculate the response time. Okay. As I have given you that calculate the response time as well. Okay. So how to calculate the response time? For calculating the response time. For calculating the response time. We 
are having the formula that is the CPU first allocation time. CPU first allocation time. minus the arrival time minus the arrival time okay cpu first allocation time ka yahan par matlab hai ki cpu sabse pehle process ko kab allot kiya gaya tha right as we could check like agar hum process number p1 ke liye check kare to process number p1 ke liye cpu ko sabse pehle kab yahan par allot kiya gaya tha at six quantum of time right प्रोसेस नंबर पी वन को सीपीयू कब फर्स्टली अलॉट किया गया था एट सिक्स क्वांटम ऑफ टाइम एंड व्हाट वाज़ द एलोकेशन टाइम व्हाट वाज़ द अराइवल टाइम टू सो दैट मींस इट वुड बी द रिस्पांस टाइम वुड बी सिक्स माइनस टू इट वुड बी फोर दिस इज द रिस्पांस टाइम दिस इज द रिस्पांस टाइम नाउ इसी तरीके से वॉट यू डू लाइक यू जस्ट कैलकुलेट द रिस्पॉन्स टाइम फॉर प्रोसेस नंबर पी राइट right? आप देखिए कि प्रोसेस नंबर P2 को CPU पहले CPU को पहली बार कब अलॉट किया गया था राइट सो एट इलेवन क्वांटम ऑफ टाइम सी पी यू हैज बिन अलॉटेड टू प्रोसेस नंबर P2 राइट सो इट वुड बी इलेवन माइनस द अराइवल टाइम ऑफ प्रोसेस नंबर P2 दैट मींस इट वुड बी इलेवन माइनस वन टेन राइट नाउ प्रोसेस नंबर P3 को CPU यू कब अलॉट किया गया था यू जस्ट चेक फ्रॉम द गिव दिस गेन चार्ज At seven quantum of time, so it would be seven minus the arrival time of process number P two. So, uh, no, sorry, P three. So it would be three. Okay. Now, what is the next process? Process number P four. P four ko sabse pehle CPU allot kiya gaya tha at zero quantum of time. So zero minus zero, it would be zero. Then, if we would check process number P five, so first of all, the CPU would be allotted at eight. So it would be eight minus two. That means six, right? So this is how we could calculate the response time for any of the, like you could say any of the numericals or the for different number of processes, right? So this is the second example using shortest job first algorithm. Hope you have understood. So if you have liked this video, so what you do, please do comment in the below comment box if you have really liked it. and uh, as well as what you do you just share it with your friends and uh, in your other groups okay if you have liked this video and uh, if you have not subscribed the channel then please do subscribe it so till then thank you thank you so much